So hello everyone, uh, welcome to the Mike Armstrong podcast show and uh, this morning I'm joined by Peter Rollinson who's an action coach uh, based at the, uh, well based in Bath and uh, we'll have a chat about his business and a bit of networking and uh, get to know each other because this is our first uh, chat uh, whilst online. How are you doing today uh, Peter, you okay? Yeah, I'm really good, thanks. Okay, good, that's good to hear. So, uh, yeah, um, I usually start off with uh, asking people about the lockdown, how it's been for them, and if they've done any particular pivoting in their business during that time. Yeah, so lockdown, it's uh, been an interesting few months. So uh, the nature of what we, we do, well, to start with, we had to look after all our clients. Uh, so we've ended up working much longer and more. So we moved all of our clients onto a weekly support session. We ran two, uh, two webinars uh, to support them, one being much more uh, dealing with their challenges, another one being with deliberate guest speakers. And uh, so that went right the way through. And so the business side has been uh, anything but relaxing for the last three months. It's been quite, I mean, it's been quite a challenge. Uh, Touch wood, all of our clients are now in a position where they're beginning to push forward and uh, step out of this, which is great. And uh, looking forward to, to seeing them really thrive over the coming months. And that includes everyone from a restaurant chain to an events and exhibitions company. So uh, in terms of pivoting on that side, there's been a lot going on. And on our side, we've moved everything online. Um, We've created the webinar series. We've actually redesigned the whole of the office format here. And uh, the, the plans that we had in place at the beginning of the year have actually all accelerated through. So hence the progress shed is now up and functioning, uh, probably about three months ahead of schedule, which is pretty exciting. Okay, that's good. So, um, yeah, well, I'm aware of Action Coach. Uh, I've, I've met a few of their uh, franchisees, if you like, in uh, South Wales. Uh, but for those who are uh, maybe listening on my podcast or catching us on uh, YouTube, tell us a little bit more about sort of Action Coach and, uh, and what you do. So Action Coach is a, a franchise business and traditionally we've run across, uh, in terms of this, it's been on a regional model. So uh, myself, I cover the whole of the South West and South Wales. Um, locally, we'll tend to work with on our side with businesses in Bath and with businesses in Salisbury, uh, Chippenham, Bristol, and those sort of areas. Uh, with everything going online, actually, it's amazing. We have clients all over the Southwest and we have clients in uh, as far as Italy, um, so which is quite exciting. Um, Action Coach itself is a franchise business that's deliberately designed to help businesses to really gain the focus and the tools to let small businesses make money and let the owners actually have a business that serves them. So creating the time frame that suits them with the leadership and management styles that let the business progress. Uh, the real, I suppose the ultimate goal being to move towards what we call a finished business, which is a commercial profitable enterprise that works without you. And if we can achieve that, then we've done great things. Uh, interestingly, talking, going through lockdown, one of my clients have actually managed to uh, uh, hold together and complete a sale of the whole business, where actually he's going to step away from the business, sell the whole thing and move on. And that, I suppose, is the ultimate goal for many of my clients. For others, though, it's just to get the business to serve them. Uh, action coach. Probably the best business toolkit that you'll find in the marketplace. Okay, all right, that's uh, that's good. That's good for the guys to, to hear that. And um, tell us a little bit. You're based in a, a place called the the Progress Shed in Bath. Tell us a little bit about the concept and and and, and how that works uh, on a day to day basis. So the Progress Shed is a, a group of business people who have come together with their own businesses but we're all like-minded. So our objective is to really be the hub for progress for every business. And that means we, we, we're approaching things slightly differently. So we've got a recruitment service, the recruitment service, we have a simple process that uh, will help you all the way through the recruitment process and place your can candidate into the role. 
but we believe that if that person doesn't work out, if they're not the right person, then if they leave within six months, well, we'll just replace them and go through the whole process with you again. Um, no quibble guarantees. Uh, on the marketing front, one of the big challenges with uh, marketing in the environment tends to be that people will get marketing in someone's opinion. If it doesn't work, there's no comeback on it. So we're helping people to understand the way to put things in place and have that tooling uh, alongside them. And everything that's coming out of the program shared is a deliberate service that's designed to really just challenge the way business is done. It's, it's to make the business world a better place. And on our coaching side, it's very straightforward. If we don't create an element of value where you see the, the, the worth in what we do, well, just tell us. And then either you can have your coaching for nothing, or we'll give you back a, a financial difference in terms of uh, our fees, because we're not cheap. Uh, touch wood. To the point nobody's ever called us on the guarantees because everything we everything we do is about giving that value. And the progress shared is about giving that value. It's about building a community of ambitious, ethical, and uh, progressive businesses uh, who actually really just want to drive their own businesses forward to drive the whole whole business world forward. That's why we came together. Uh, it's called the progress shared because the unit we're in an industrial unit. Um, although we'll have our little hogs within it and when, when we took it on we, we stood outside and uh, we looked up and Jasper from across the way came running over going oh you're looking at one of the sheds are you and uh, yeah. one of my colleagues goes yeah, the progress shed yeah we can, we, we can do something with that and it just kind of stuck and therefore we're now in here so we've got a team of Seven uh, actually in here, eight by eight in here, and a couple more starting in the next few weeks. So it's pretty exciting, really. Sounds like you're making progress. Sounds like we're making progress. Oh, if you're not, if you're not making progress, you're just going backwards, and that's no fun for any of us. Yeah, exactly. You know, at the end of the day, I'm a progressive person myself, so it's all about progressing. It's all about levels. How how do you get to the next level in life? How do you get to the next level in your business? You know, it's all about going through. Uh, the process in order to get the progress. You can have Absolutely. That, you? <laughs> so, um, so obviously you, you deal with a lot of businesses. What is the main sort of uh, area that, that businesses usually, usually need your help in? So on, on my side, we'll generally work with the business owners or the leadership team. And I, I, I suppose the the, the different areas we work on, so the Action Coach Toolbox is great for progressing various different areas. The initial part that we'll work on is identifying what are the bits which are causing people to get stuck, businesses to get stuck. Um, whether that's the business owner's desire to be the superhero in their business, and therefore they feel the need to be in control of it, and they've got to be the expert, they've got to be the ones to do it. Uh, whether it's that ability to generate and create the right leads to identify their target markets and recognize the overall process. Um, whether it's actually just that they've got a complete lack of control within the business because they don't know the basic foundation. So they haven't got a business plan in place. And it's amazing how when businesses don't have a plan, they tend to just kind of sit around waiting for something to happen. Whereas when they create a plan, they tend to make the progress. Um, if they don't have their basic understanding of their numbers and their finance, they don't know where they are. And helping them to recognize these elements, equally just looking at the overall delivery, like what, what is your service, what's the problem it solves, and how do you actually provide that to your marketplace? Um, so any of these will work through. From the core objective is to make sure that businesses are getting better at making money and actually recognizing the flow of money through a business and how you turn that into profit and have strategies on each of the different areas, well, that's huge. And it's something which big business is great at doing just by having a department focused on each of the areas. Small business, you know what? We get busy. We forget bits and things become erratic. So creating consistent flows of marketing, consistent flows of clients, and consistent strategies working on the areas that actually make you more money is 
probably the core area we start with. As time progresses, though, it's then about working on the team. It's about working on the processing, the systemization, the breaking the reliance on individuals. So the areas we'll work on with businesses, to be honest with you, it, it's tailored to every business we work with. Yeah, yeah it's sort of like uh, it's like looking at the business, seeing uh, in, in metaphor terms, seeing which bit of the, um, the body they've been exercising and which bits they've been ignoring and how do you get them to do an exercise for the other bits so that the whole uh, body grows at the same pace at the same time and, and, and is all shaped perfectly in, in form, etc. Absolutely. It's having all those ducks in a row and making sure you don't leave one behind. Yeah, 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 definitely. I, I concentrate a lot um, on the sales and marketing side of things. I, I'm a former corporate sales director and I'm an award-winning networker, award-winning marketeer as well. So I, I usually, you know, that's the bit that I consider to be the most important in any business because without the sales and marketing, you haven't got a business. And the rest of it, if you like, you can get people like yourself once you've got that sales and marketing going which is what my, my thing is to do then you can sort of get lots of people to help you grow all those other component parts once the, the, the key bit is working like you know that's my sort of thought process on that and then making sure that it all moves so making sure you've got the relevant bits oiled making sure that you have got the next step in sight because it's amazing how many businesses you'll talk to where they go yeah well we're fine um, and if the response is fine, well, that usually means that actually they're not progressing. No. If they're not progressing in a marketplace, they tend to be going backwards, especially in the current environment. Um, the current environment has got to be about progress. Yeah, well, I, I was always, again, a massive technology fan. So I used to work for a tech startup business and we used to sell tech solutions to corporate companies before I went self-employed. And I was always trying to get people to embrace technology and the internet because progress is key and everyone else is embracing it. And so if you're not, you're falling further behind. But quite a lot of those people, the coronavirus done a much better job than I have of forcing them into embracing the technology because a lot of people will only do something when they're forced into it rather than when they want to or choose to do it. So actually, I think it's a really good time. It's a great time for me at the moment because so many people are now embracing technology and, and uh, adapting to the internet and how, how they do that in their business and obviously I've been doing that for a long time probably 20 odd years you know I've been using technology in business to, to improve it so I'm looking forward to helping people you know as they start doing more on social media and they start doing more on their website and they need more SEO and, and all those sort of things so it's a great time for me plus I'm a, a networker and I was going from networking in Wales to networking around the UK for the last couple of years anyway but since the lockdown I'm now globally networking so yes you come on, you come on from Bath but I've been speaking to people from you know Ohio and Canada and Africa and all over the place you know Vietnam everywhere and, you know? and it's amazing how easy it is yeah, well, yeah, it's the same as speaking to you or speaking to anyone in Wales. It's no different for me speaking to someone in Canada or Ohio or any in California than it is speaking to anyone in Cardiff, you know, which is where I used to do all my all my business from. Yeah. Uh, so, I, and uh, I found it amazing how switching, uh, like, so we, we're generally using Zoom as a platform, um, but switching over to Zoom, actually, it, it, it's very easy to have quick conversations. It's far more effective than the phone. And yeah, I spoke to a guy a couple of days ago, uh, end of last week, who uh, who, who actually uh, said, "Oh wow, this is my first my first Zoom call ever." <laughs> to which I said, "Well, they've been using Skype or something else." No, no, just the phone. Uh, <laughs> it's like wow. It's amazing how much more interactive it is, though. And it, I, mean, I, I think it'll be a long time before it replaces face-to-face -face meetings. Uh, I think that face-to-face -face definitely adds something into it. But as I, a, think, uh, I think the, the ratio of face-to-face -face is going to drop dramatically. Yeah, so I think people will still do face-to-face. -face. I used to run a telesales operation in a tech startup business, and then we turned that into field sales. And we used to do deals up to three grand over the phone, and then over three grand, we'd go and see people because you have to build that trust and shake people's hands and see the whites in their eyes and, and all that sort of thing. Plus also, if you were going to a bigger company, that, that, that would be at least three grand or more. If you had time to have an hour and a half with them, say, or a two hour meeting, you could find out a lot more about their business to 
grow the solution and grow the average order value, whereas you can't do that on, on a phone call because you know people don't spend as long on a phone call as they would do in a face to face. So there's there's those sort of things to take into consideration if you like. But I just think for an efficiency, Zoom wins hands down. So I think a lot of people are going to be doing efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. Oh, big deal, go and see them. You know, I think it's yeah. going to work like that. You know, that's the that's the strategy that I would educate people to follow is is how to implement you know guidelines and rules around that in your business to get the most use of efficiency and personal contact in the right situations and overall the ability to um, to maximize your use of the time and just make time just so much more efficient actually zoom is a great way of doing it um oh, yeah. and it hits i used uh, to do um, i used to do two networking events a week in the real world two hour meetings so that's four hours hour you know getting ready and driving you know either side say yeah so yeah. that's another, um, say, eight, so that's eight hours, basically, yeah? So now you can do four meetings in those eight hours rather than two meetings in those eight hours, yeah? So I've, I've gone from doing two real-world networking events a week to doing eight online ones a week, or between six and eight. You know, eight some weeks, six others. Um, but yeah, you know, so the amount of people you can meet and, and, and go through is, is much more. So instead of having to... Um, to be a bit more generalistic because you're covering a geographical area. You can be a lot more tighter and niche, if you like, because you can find those niche people in a much wider area. Yeah. Uh, and it, it, it's I mean, some, of the, some of the online networking as well. I mean, it, it, it works very well with the breakout rooms and actually pushing in there. We actually run a, a quarterly planning club, yeah. which, uh, Obviously, normally we'd, have, we'd meet up, have a day where clients all interact and socialise. They're very excited that we might be able to get back to a real environment in September. But in the meantime, actually having that connection and just being able to relate to people in a, in a I suppose, a semi-social environment online is really powerful. Um, and I think it probably helps uh, people just... Keep a little bit grounded through these strange times as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, for me, I'm, I'm on a mission to become a global speaker. So for me, like you know, Zoom and, and connecting with people around the world is is the key for me because if I want to get speaking gigs around the world, then I got to be connected to people around the world. Yeah, uh, definitely. And uh, uh, it, it, it's it's quite interesting because on our Tuesday webinar, we've had a variety of speakers from the UK so we probably need to talk about that but we've also had uh, we've got uh, had Mike Michalowicz uh, from the States and we've got uh, Dan Green so the founder of Canary coming up in a couple of weeks yeah. so we've uh, had uh, Henio Vogast from uh, he's based over in Germany and it's quite incredible how easy it is to bring people across so long as they remember to upgrade their Wi-Fi so they actually have a decent enough connection yeah um, yeah, good. Yeah, well, if ever you need somebody to come and have a chat about uh, sales, marketing, social media, networking, they're my four sort of pillars. I, I talk about all those things on my podcast as well. And uh, that's the other thing is because I'm uh, doing a lot of networking, but I'm also creating a lot of content from podcasts and YouTube and that. I now combine them all together. So, like, you know, I'll do my networking with people, record it for my podcast, stick it on my YouTube channel. So I'm saving so much time because. I'm creating content at the same time as just going about my day-to-day -day business. That's the best yeah. way of creating content. Uh, and I suppose that get, getting the message out now is just so important. And the easier you can make it, the, the, the easier you make it, the more use it can be to you and indeed to potential prospects and other businesses. Yeah, well, I'm all about systems and processes because I'm all about efficiency and technology. And actually, if you use technology yeah, in a system and a process, you get so much efficiency that you save so much time. Are you able to do two, three, four, five, ten times the amount of work that other people can do who you're competing with in the marketplace? So therefore, you're able to deliver much greater results with a much less effort. And that's what I'm all about. So, you know, uh, at the same time as I'm having a networking chat now and sticking it on my podcast and Zoom once this finishes, I'll also, from my podcast and Zoom, share it to all my social media 
plus I'll put links in there which helps with my SEO. I'm doing about like 10 tasks at once. Yeah, it's, uh, it is amazing how effective technology can be for letting you, it's not multitask, but it's letting you actually feed through your content to multiple platforms uh, across, across multiple networks. Yeah, yeah. That, in my experience, businesses, I don't know what you find, I'll ask you in a minute, but in my experience, businesses market about 10% of the amount they should do. You know, and the, and the successful businesses are marketing at 10 times what other people are doing. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, there's an absolute truth in that. And it, it's incredible how, look, how and like, if you look at someone like Amazon, like they never stop their marketing. No, Coca-Cola is the big one. Coca-Cola, everyone knows to buy Coke, but every yeah. Christmas it comes on the telly. And uh, uh, like the, the, the level of exposure these big brands will just deliberately push out, but they never turn it off, they never turn it down. And yet within small business environment, invariably, like we go, right, that's it, we've got all the good intentions, we set up our marketing programs, we, we get a marketing plan in place, it's all part of our lead generation process, we attract people, then we get busy. And then we get busy and, it, and inevitably it kind of becomes that, the busier I get, the less activity I do. Yeah. And so that's something which we always do on the marketing front is recommend people create their, their, their score of marketing index, so where their marketing activity is the right level, uh, which, uh, which will vary by business, because some businesses need to do an awful lot more, others need to do a lot less. Um, it'll, different businesses use different platforms and so on. But if you can actually create a, a standard score for your level of activity, then it means that you can look at your marketing the whole time, whether you're busy or not, and say, you know what, our score's dropping down a bit, we need to do more. And it never becomes an issue. And yet it was quite interesting um, uh, during lockdown that uh, was actually our dentist did nothing. We didn't hear from them. Yeah. In yeah. fact, we even had a family appointment. <laughs> so I was tempted yeah. to turn up to it and then send the, 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 the cancellation invoice. Charge them a fine. Uh, Charge them a fine for not honouring it. Yeah. Uh, send them the fine. Um, but the reality was, then one of the other local dentists has been putting out lots of social media saying, if you need any emergency treatment, if you need this, we're, we're looking forward to be over here. We're very much planning on moving dentists. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's it. Do you want to be doing? Do you want to be doing business with somebody who is, uh, you know, head in the sand and, and and panicking or whatever, or or just you know not doing anything, or somebody who's being proactive, reactive, responsive, innovative, you know, longer term, you know, you want to you want to deal with someone better, don't you? You want to deal with better people, you know. With a dentist, a little bit different because it's quite hard to to switch and to and to get uh, appointments and stuff. But if with most businesses, it's very easy to switch. So You've got to make sure you're the one that people want to switch to, not switch yeah. away from. And it's amazing how quiet so many businesses have been. And now they're reopening, they're, they're beginning to go, oh, yeah, we're still here, by the way. Yeah. And it's a crazy approach. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't take much to set things up. And we've got one client who's pretty much put their main business on hold until the markets come back. Um, but they've set up a whole hoop suite and... Uh, online family they've got a holding web page so as far as the world's concerned they're still there it doesn't take them any effort it's all set up while they can concentrate on a decent sized pivot to change the shape of what they do to have a, a, a product that's in the marketplace already um, but constant never-ending marketing and sales i mean it's, it's not rocket science a lot of people think they're just going to build a big business and become successful and rich and stuff by doing very little. And you know, the reality is, you know, unless you're very, very lucky and make a lucky break doing something or you know something really, you know, magnificent you invent or something like that. And the vast majority of people, the only way they can get to success is by working hard at it, day in, day out, every day. You know. uh, working hard day in, day out, every day, making sure they're working on the right things, making sure they're consistently learning. And it's, um, it, it amazes me how people come into business and they, uh, they, they don't bother to learn the basics of being in business. For example, uh, by um, basic accounts, 
Right? You don't have to be an accountant. No. But you do have to be able to see your numbers. Profit and loss. Profit and loss. And profit margins. Profit, and, yeah. profit and loss. Cash Total flow. Value. Average order um, value. Things like that. Basic stuff. Basic stuff. Um, they do have to understand the flow of money through a business. They do have to understand sales. Yeah. And it amazes me how many business owners you'll talk to and, uh, and you'll say, well, do, do you like sales? Some will go, yeah, I love it. I really enjoy it. it it's absolutely my, my favorite role in the business. The majority, though, uh, well, sales, I, I, I do it because I have to. And I, um, yeah. I ask people at events sometimes, uh, you know, when I've done talks to entrepreneurs. I say to them, how many people here are involved in sales? You get a small percentage with a hand up. And I'm going to say, how many of you are business owners looking for more customers? And then you'll get like a, a lot more hands up. And I go, well, you're all in sales then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's incredible. And uh, the same applies with marketing. But, but the same applies with finance. I'll do something similar with finance. I'll say, right, hands up. Uh, I will be doing a session on um, basic accounting. And I'm not an accountant. Uh, my, my, my nightmare was realized when I had an accountancy firm and a bookkeepers in my finance session. Um, that was always going to be fun. Um, but the reality is this basic understanding of what's going on with your numbers. It's knowing how to ask the right questions of your accountant. But I'll say, put your hand up if you like finance. One or two people in a room will move. Hands up if you like cash. <laughs> right, same thing. Yeah. People like cash, they're not in finance, but they're the same thing in business. And well, one of the easiest ways of, uh, of making money and making a, a business more cash better, uh, uh, cash flow better, rich, if you like, or, or better off in their cash flow, is going away from 30-day invoices to either 14-day invoices, 7-day invoices, or pay up front. Yeah. You know, with any little change, and it can make a massive difference to a business. Huge. And recognise uh, um, the number of businesses who actually just don't stay up to date with their invoicing. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That's crazy. Because uh, if you don't invoice, don't expect to get paid. Yeah. Um, it, it's a simple truth. And having sensible credit control. So actually understanding all of this in business is huge. And yet most people are good, or most people seem to go into business not because they're good at business, but because they're good at what they do. Yeah. They're good at the technical bit. They're good at the sales, or they're good at, um, uh, they're good at cussing hair. I, I'm Thank big on hair business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, making something or doing something or whatever. Yeah. But, um, well, they really, but what they don't ever, they really they don't ever focus on is I need to be good at the core elements of business. I need to be good at sales. I need to be good at marketing. I need to be good at uh, my numbers. I need to be good at uh, putting in strategies. I need to be good at planning. Yeah, it's, like, it's be... like if you're a runner. If you're a runner, you can run. But if you're an Olympic runner, you've got to be good at sleeping, meditating, visualization. You know, looking after your body, whatever. Like you know, what I mean, you have to become good at lots of other things because those other marginal gains, if you like, make a difference to how good you are at running. And that's yeah, a bit like however, however good you are at whatever it is that you do, your business needs to be good at all these other things like sales and marketing and finance and cash flow and. All these other things otherwise you know you're just a runner you're not a professional runner uh, and then as a business right now it's it's very easy to say well we can't plan because we don't know what's coming up uh, but if you don't put in your plans if you're not working towards something it's going to be very difficult to make the progress yeah and as, as far uh, as i'm concerned uh, no one's ever had a crystal ball anyway so how, how can you plan for the future you've got to just best guesstimate and put some things in place and Keep, keep an eye on it and, and, and go towards it, like, haven't you? I'm very much okay saying, actually, this is the point I want to get to by right now, by Christmas maybe, or by, by the end of March. But setting that clearly defined point and then saying, well, what needs to happen to get me there? Recognising that plans at the moment need to be able to concertina and flex more than they ever have in the past, really because the environment is so volatile. And... Uh, I, uh, I, I feel so sorry for anybody who arrived in Spain two days ago um, because the environment's changed and uh, I think that's just the nature of the... Well, I, I feel sorry for them, but in a way I also think, uh, you know, they're a bit crazy to have been travelling so quickly after lockdown anyway. And I think so with a bit of, right. a bit of both there. I think a, I'm a very optimistic person, but to book a holiday 
during this global pandemic is a bit uh, taking uh, taking a Russian roulette to uh, to, to your plans. Unless you're in a position where you can quite happily come home and spend two weeks in isolation. Yeah, yeah if you've been uh, quarantined and you're not totally pressured. Our, our travel plans have modified somewhat and we'll, we'll be joining you in South Wales in a few weeks' time. Yeah, well, I think um, it's, a great, uh, it's a great opportunity. Yes, we haven't had the weather the last few uh, weeks and obviously people do like to go away, but it is, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, the sun's nice. But you can do plenty of things in the UK and it's a great time to explore what the UK has to offer because it's got plenty. Yeah, it does. Yeah, uh, so uh, well, I'm conscious that you've got uh, other places to be. Um, so yeah. um, I'm just going to um, uh, leave it with, uh, uh, if you can give your contact information, how people get hold of you and that sort of thing. Yeah, so I'm Peter Robertson at actioncoach.com and phone number 01373. 801234 and always happy to have a conversation with anybody who's looking at really putting the progress back into their business and looking at getting things moving forward. Okay, and is there a social media platform that's best to get you on? Uh, you, you can always find me on LinkedIn and uh, Facebook. Uh, I, we're, we're on most of them actually. Yeah. Um, Okay, good. All right, then. Well, uh, yeah, thanks a lot for coming on the uh, podcast and for having a chat with me about yourself and your business. It's great to uh, to get to know you. And obviously, if I get any contacts, especially in the Southwest, uh, I've got lots of contacts in, in Wales and the Southwest. Um, you know, the network I belong to in Wales is Intrapiz, and they, they get a lot of people from the, uh, South Wales and the Southwest. So, um, yeah, if ever you want to come on an Intrabiz event, check out intrabiz.co.uk. Uh, Action Coach members uh, in Wales have, have been on, but no one from England, I don't think. Uh, yeah, so come on, let them know that I invited you as well, because uh, as a member, I get a little benefit. And, uh, excellent, excellent. Yeah, yeah, thanks for coming on. And, and you know, we'll, we'll keep in touch on LinkedIn and follow each other and, and just see how the relationship builds from there. Yeah, I'll give, I'll give you a shout about doing a session on one of our Tuesday mornings. Yeah, that would be uh, awesome. Yeah, so uh, yeah, thanks a lot for um, coming on and have a great day. You too. Okay. Cheers, bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah. Right, that was a great chat with Peter Rollinston uh, from the Action Coach uh, franchise. Uh, and there's nothing else left for me to say now other than have a great day. I know I will. And thanks very much for listening. You can catch out more about me by visiting mikearmstrong.me and uh, checking out my website. Cheers. Bye-bye.